Welcome to the Property Nomads podcast and welcome to the Estadio Azteca, uh, one of the most iconic football stadiums in the world. We're going to explore what makes this stadium so cool. Uh, we're going to sort of dive into a couple of games that I went to over there this year and, you know, really why, if you've not already been to this stadium, why you should go to this stadium. Well, what makes a, any form of stadium iconic? That's a good question. It could be the team that plays it. It could be something architecturally satisfying about the stadium. For example, the, the, the big red trusses on the roof at the San Siro. Or it could be simply down to the team that plays there. So, for example, the Nou Camp, Barcelona. Big stadium, very big stadium, but also it's FC Barcelona. Many people know who they are. Or what makes the Azteca iconic? Well, two things. Number one, it's hosted two World Cup finals. There's not many stadiums in the world. In fact, it's possibly the only stadium in the world, maybe, checks facts, that's hosted two World Cup finals. So it's very rare from that point of view. Number two, it is a behemoth of a stadium. It's a monster of a stadium. When it was built, I think the capacity is about 120,000 people. Nowadays, it's about 86,000 people. And the Mexican national team play there. A, a, a team called Club America play there. And also Cruz Azul play there as well. Cruz Azul were just temporarily playing at the stadium because they're having a new stadium being built somewhere else in Mexico City. What else makes the Azteca iconic? The, the seats make it quite iconic. So it's got a, a massive uh, set of seats on the bottom tier that have the Coca-Cola logo. And then for the rest of the ground in the upper tiers, it, it's Corona, as in the beer, not the uh, uh, virus. So it's very iconic from, from that point of view. The roof is also quite funky too. I wasn't born in 1986, but it is also the site of the famous Hand of God goal. Uh, this is where uh, Diego Maradona, an Argentinian football player, uh, handled the ball. It punched the ball basically into the back of the net uh, against England. Argentina went on to win the game 2-1. And in all fairness, his second goal was probably one of the best goals ever seen in football. He just ran past most of the England team, popped the ball in the back of the net. Argentina win 2-1. Of course, four years after the Falklands or the Islas Malvinas, as they say in Argentina. I can imagine that that game was quite intense. But that's what makes the Azteca an iconic stadium. It's you know, the host of two World Cup finals and also actually one of the most iconic goals in football. Uh, not just the hand of God goal, but the Carlos Alberto's goal for Brazil against Italy in the 1970 World Cup. It's the goal where he literally comes out of nowhere and he thunderbolts a shot right into the bottom corner. Keeper's got no chance. Brazil win 4-1. You know, one of the greatest Brazil teams ever. So all of those things add up. And when you speak to people, I speak to people. And when I've told them that I've been to the Azteca... You, you do get a few choice words because it, it's one of those stadiums. You just go, oh man, that's so cool. It, again, it's like going to New Camp in Barcelona. It's like uh, the Bernabeu, Real Madrid, uh, Anfield, Liverpool, Old Trafford, Man United, San Siro, Inter Milan, AC Milan. You know, these are the iconic stadiums in world football. The Azteca is no different. Now, from experience, I've got good experiences, bad experiences of, the, of Azteca Stadium. So uh, the good experience is to say that you've been and gone. Happy days. And the two negative experiences, there's number one, I had my phone nicked. Uh, good old bit of pickpocketing uh, outside uh, the stadium. Uh, completely unbeknownst to me till I went to search for my phone and then couldn't find it. Uh, hats off to the person that done that. To be fair, the phone was on the way out anyway, but uh, still a bit of a shock to the system. Uh, secondly, cruisers all. Oh, my word. Uh, we went to myself and and uh, the future mrs property nomads podcast went to watch cruisers all play i think they played at atletico san luis uh now they are they, it was either nil nil or they lost one nil but my word they were turgid oh holy smokes cruisers all were absolutely shocking are you dear oh dear if you thought that manchester game was bad that i spoke about this was this takes a biscuit best part of that game though was where it was um just coming into rainy season in, in Mexico, uh, the thunder and lightning that you could see from out the stadium was impeccable. 
I've never seen a rainstorm like it, uh, so much so that we uh, we had to stay in the stadium for about 45 minutes after the game had finished because it was, you know, you would have needed a kayak to get out. It, there was so much rain. The stadium itself is very easy to get in and out of. Uh, that's that's a, kudo, a big kudos, I have to say. And with uh, football in, in the Americas, rather than have loads of kiosks to go and grab your beers and stuff, people walk around with beers. So, you know, you pay for you pay for the beer there and then and, and drink the beer in the seat or, or donuts or other other foods as well. So you don't have all this this kiosk experience that we would get over here. People come to you with all the goods, which is makes life a lot easier. The seating's cool at the stadium. Uh, we saw Cruz Azul play, play Atletico San Luis. So that was a dreadful game. And we went back uh, a, a week or so later because Club America were playing Cruz Azul. Big derby, big derby, big Mexico City derby. And there's about 52, 53,000 people there. One of the biggest attendances of the season. And the atmosphere was electric. Really good atmosphere. Now that game did finish 0-0. So it was a shame not to have the ball hit the back of the net there. But that game ended 0-0. And it, again, what amazed me about that was two teams, it's two teams that play in the same city. Now you would normally think they're not going to like each other. I don't think they like each other. But there was no there was no hint of fan violence. People were mingling with each other. There was no segregation. So, you know, away fans, home fans. There was none of that. Everyone was mingling. Everyone was shouting their abuse at the referee and, and the players for not doing a, a great job. The game itself was, I say, it was a bit drab. Not as drab as the other Cruises all game. But the atmosphere was very good. And it was a very, very late kickoff. And, um, yeah, just about got back to the hotel in time. i say the unfortunate bit was... Uh, miss uh, having my phone pickpocketed so piece of advice if you're ever out and about in Mexico or any other country uh, get yourself a bum bag put put your goods in there and that'll make your life a lot easier and a lot smoother uh, what else about the Azteca stadium they've also got a really funky uh, Aztec face on the ground outside the stadium as well it hosts NFL games American football games too in, as part of their international series and also with the 2026 World Cup the Azteca will be hosting games as well unfortunately it's not going to be hosting another final I believe that's going to be in New York which again is probably a commercial reason more than anything else but if you get a chance and you're over in Mexico City then do get to the Azteca uh, what I will say is it's not the easiest of stadiums to get to uh, in terms of uh, subway stations and things like that uh, the the stadium itself is on a light rail network system and you can only get to that by getting the number two metro line all the way to the very end and again for a stadium that holds 85 86 thousand people you know, that's not great that being said there is a big main road next to it and buses to and from the center of Mexico City are quite frequent but yeah I'd I'd recommend getting a private cab or if you're brave enough just get on one of the many random buses uh, take the bus to the nearest metro station and and get on and get on the metro that's the Estadio Azteca again recommend please do go if you're ever out there Uh, whenever I get to the point of uh, living out there and you want to come out there then you know send us an email happy to happy to go there's always a big bunch of football going on at that stadium uh, and you know a bunch of other activities going on what I would say is what do you think and I open in the question what's the most iconic stadium that you've ever been to and why Uh, come and join us on our socials social links are in the the show notes you know let us know what's the best football stadium you've ever been to why is it the best stadium what's the most iconic stadium in your in your mind and why so come and join us on the socials at the same time Leave us a review as well. And next week, we'll be going into a completely random game that we ended up going to, uh, the Mrs. Future Property Nomads podcast and myself. And this was another Mexico City game, but this time it was at a different stadium, not the Azteca. Join us next week for CONCACAF Champions League final. Hasta luego. <laughs>